Alan Steady here with Firewalls.com. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to create firewall rules. Firstly, we'll need to be logged into the UTM's web admin. Once logged into the web admin, navigate to network protection in the menu, followed by firewall in the submenu. Under the rules tab, you can manage the firewall rules set. Opening the tab by default, user created firewall rules are displayed only. Using the drop down list on top of the list, you can choose to display automatic firewall rules instead, or both types of rules combined. Automatic firewall rules are displayed with a distinct background color. Automatic firewall rules are generated by UTM based on a selected automatic firewall rules checkbox in one of your configurations. All newly defined firewall rules are disabled by default once added to the rules table. Automatic firewall rules and enabled user created firewall rules are applied in the given order until the first rule matches. Automatic firewall rules are always on top of the list. The processing order of the user created firewall rules is determined by the position number. So if you change the order of the rules by the position numbers, the processing order changes as well. Note that once a firewall rule is matched, all other rules are ignored. So for that reason, the sequence of rules is very important. Never place a rule such as any source, any service, or any destination allow action at the top of the rule table, as this allows each packet to transverse the gateway in both directions, ignoring all of the rules that may follow. To create a firewall rule, select the New Rules tab. Here we can enter in the parameters of our new firewall rule. On the Group option, this can be useful to group rules logically. And with the drop down list, on top of the list, you can filter rules by their group. Grouping is only used for display purposes. It does not affect rule matching. To create a new group, select the new group option and we can enter in a name here. And because in this example we'll be using this for our red network that we've created, we can go ahead and select red sales network. We can also select a position number which will define the priority of the rule. So lower numbers have higher priority. Rules are matched in ascending order. Once a rule has matched, rules with a higher number will not be evaluated anymore. So you wouldn't want to select a really broad firewall rule to be selected at the top of the list. So we'll just go ahead and leave this set to bottom. To select a source, we'll select the folder here. And this is used to describe from which host or hosts or networks that the packets will be originating from. And because again, this is for our red remote sales branch network, so our traffic will be originating from this location, we can go ahead and select this network. How to create these network definitions is created in a separate video. We are now ready to add a service definition, which describes the protocols that will be allowed to traverse the source and destination ports of the packets. So for this example, we can just go ahead and select any. We're now ready to select our destination network which describes the target host or hosts or networks of the packets. And because we want to connect this remote network to our internal network, we can go ahead and select our internal network here. We now want to select the action which describes what to do with the traffic that matches the rule. Here we have the ability to allow, the connection is allowed and traffic is forwarded, or drop. Packets matching a rule with this action will be silently dropped or to reject connection requests, so matching rules with this action will be actively rejected. The sender is informed via an IACMP message, so in some cases it may be better practice to drop packets as opposed to rejecting them because the rejection could result of the sender being provided information regarding our UTM or network. In this example we want to allow this traffic and we can also enter in an optional comment to add a description or other information regarding our new firewall rule. We'll just go ahead and enter in red sales branch. And We also have some additional options by expanding the advanced option. Here we can set a time period which by default no time period definition is selected meaning that the rule is always valid. If you select a time period, the rule will only be valid at the time specified by the time period definition. For more information, see time period definitions, which will be covered in a later video. We'll go ahead and let, leave this set to always. We also have the option to log traffic. Now, if you select this option, logging is enabled and packets matching the rule are logged in the firewall log. 
We can also select a source MAC address list definition, describing from which MAC addresses the packets are originating. If selected, packets only match their rule if their source MAC address is listed in this definition. Note that you cannot use a MAC address list in combination with the source any. MAC address list definitions are defined on the definitions and users, network definitions, MAC address definitions tab and will be covered in a separate video. Because we won't be using any advanced options, we can go ahead and collapse this here and select save. We can now see that our new firewall rule has been created and we're ready to enable the firewall rule by selecting the enable button.